Hi friends, Amanda here with Hungry Bubbles. And today I'm gonna to show you how I make my bath bombs. Um, so I am not super well versed in bath bombs, but um, if I can do it, you can do it. So <laughs> uh, I found a recipe online that I kind of tweaked and made it my own just because I had different ingredients on hand. But um, I went ahead and I bloomed the baking soda overnight, but I didn't quite put enough water. And you can see this is what happens. Um, you get tiny little spots of color, but for for this bath bomb, I really don't mind. I think a little, little pieces of color throughout um, might actually look kind of cute. I don't know. Um, the fragrance that I'm using today is Sweet Pea. And I'm going to put the recipe in the description for you guys um, and the amounts so that you can see um, what all dry ingredients I'm putting in here. So I have all the dry ingredients. We have baking soda, citric acid. We have SLSA, not to be confused with SLS. This is uh, coconut derived. It's a very mild surfactant, which means it's gonna foam in the bath. Um, so this is not just a fizzing bath bomb, it also foams. It floats and it kind of rolls, um, which is what I was looking for in a bath bomb. Um, you just don't want to pack it too tight. That's what causes bath bombs to not float is when they are just too heavy. Um, we also have some cream of tartar in here. Um, and that's it other than the color. I use, let's see, DNC Red 27 Lake is what I use. And um, basically it's approved for bath bombs and it is water soluble. So that's why you want to bloom colors like that because if you don't, um, it just doesn't, doesn't disperse in your, your bath bomb. It looks all weird and colors on one side and not the other, just some crazy stuff can happen. So just do your research on the colorants that you're using. And if you're selling your bath bombs, please make sure that you, you're doing the batch certified skin safe, not just micas, but like bath bomb approved, um, just because you don't want to get in any trouble for selling those when they're not skin safe necessarily. There is skin safe as in safe for soap, and then there's skin safe as in for bath bombs. It's, it's a different, it's a whole different ball game. So um, first thing I did already was did all the dry ingredients and um, Oh, and when you're working with SLSA, it's very, very powdery. It's lighter than air. So you're definitely going to want to be cautious when you're putting it in here and when you're stirring it because it can get, um, it's pretty irritating to the lungs. It's not going to hurt you necessarily, but it will make you cough. And I learned that the hard way when I first bought it. So what I like to do is just spray a little bit of 99% rubbing alcohol because it's not going to cause your bath bombs to prematurely fizz, but it will kind of dampen in a way um, so that you can mix without having the powder fluff up, fluff in your face, because um, that's not fun. Anyway, so everything is clean and sanitized. I am selling these bath bombs, so I wanna make sure that everything is pristine and clean. Um, so we need to do the wet ingredients now, and I don't go by weight, I go by volume. So I have my one cup here, which we're not going to really need that. And I need to find my, oh, here it is. One tablespoon here. So for the wet ingredients, I like to put in my oil first, which I'm going to be using grape seed oil. And this calls for two tablespoons to two and a half tablespoons. of light oil. Lightweight oil means jojoba oil, grapeseed oil, rice bran oil, um, any of the lighter oils. Like I don't think that castor oil is a light oil. It's very thick, if that makes sense. It's kind of heavier. <laughs> um, so yeah, light oil, kind that soak into the skin really well without any help. So we're gonna do, do that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my fragrance in. For this one, we're gonna use sweet pea. And I love Nature's Garden. Um, I love all their fragrance oils, or most of them. This is just a really good one. Tablespoon. 
Now, all the ingredients I'm showing you, this is for my specific batch. So if you're making a larger batch, you're gonna wanna use more or less fragrance um, or just, you know, whatever you like. So again, for this batch, for my size, I'm gonna do one tablespoon of polysorbate 80. This just helps disperse the oils so that they don't stick to your skin and they don't stick to your tub. Um, it also helps for, depending on the type of colorant you have, it also helps to not um, stick to your tub and cause staining. Um, but lucky for me, I have the lakes, um, which are water soluble, like I said. Of course, if you use enough, it could potentially stain, but um, very unlikely with water soluble colorants. Um, like if you were using just regular micas, um, you do have a potential, a potential to stain the bathtub. And so if you're selling the bath bombs, you really wanna make sure that you test them out first to make sure that that doesn't happen in your own tub, just because some people might not be happy with that. Okay. So the reason why I add the polysorbate 80 last is because it does start to thicken a little bit and you want this to be nice and smooth um, when you put it in. Let me grab a spatula real quick. Okay. So I just pour it in. Get it all up in here. Every last drop. So you don't want to have to add any more of anything other than water later on. I try my best to not use very much water because I just don't like the potential of it fizzing early on me. And that does happen, which is why when I first started making bath bombs, I used to just take a little container and I would dump in a little bit of water and it wasn't very wasn't very smart of me because it would start fizzing and I wasn't stirring it fast enough. So what would happen is that um, I had very lumpy bath bombs and just, it wasn't great. I took a, took a very long break from making bath bombs for a while because I was really frustrated and it was just because I didn't do the research. A lot of times when people get frustrated with anything they're doing, um, it's probably because they didn't practice enough or they didn't research enough. And I'm just saying that's, that's on us to, to make sure that we're doing a lot of research before we're making these things and especially before selling. Just my own little disclaimer for people, a little bit of advice, but I'm not perfect. I mean, I still am learning tons and yeah, it can be frustrating. I just posted a video on TikTok of me failing a few times before I finally got my donut bath bombs right. <laughs> and um, it's just because, you know, we, we do have to fail and we get flustered and we sometimes cry when we get super, super frustrated with what we're doing. Um, but as long as you keep trying, you do get better at almost everything that you, you do. So if you're frustrated with your bath bomb making, even if you try this recipe and it doesn't work for you, I challenge you to keep going until you get it right. Because when you do, it's really, really worth it. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that was well incorporated. And I've heard you want the texture to be like um, wet sand and this is not quite there yet. Also, there's a test you can do where you clump some in your hand and then you drop it down. And if it holds its shape, a lot better than that, it needs to hold its shape better than that. If it holds its shape, then you're good. So we need a little bit more water for this batch. So the key is to use distilled water and put it in a spray bottle and then you're gonna immediately, I just start stirring before I even spray. And I just spray like three times. Like three spritzes at a time until I get there. 
and it takes a little while and sometimes if you're newer if you're um slower at making bath bombs um, sometimes you have to reapply a little bit of water halfway through because your your stuff does tend to, to dry up as you are molding the bath bomb so if you notice they start to fall apart again just spritz a little more water or um, you can also use witch hazel I like witch, witch hazel but this is kind of going out a little bit so it's a little better but not quite there some people also use rubbing alcohol like 70% or something like that. Um, I noticed that rubbing alcohol actually tends to dry out my my batch more because alcohol is by default drying and dehydrating. <laughs> so um, that's why when you use hand sanitizer, you can, you can tell it's drying your hands. If you get that crappy store-bought stuff, that's not like, 90% rubbing alcohol and a little bit of essential oils and not enough moisturizing properties. It's not good stuff. It's getting there and you know this is why it's a, it's a whole learning process. You're you're getting a feel for it. I've made bath bombs enough to know that if I do it right now it's just going to crumble in my hands. So And if you don't have a spray bottle, you can add, that might be good. You can add um, water in like a, grab a tiny little, you know, quarter teaspoon at a time and just pour it in and just make sure that you stir. Don't let it start fizzing because the more it fizzes now, the less it's gonna fizz when you put it in the bathtub. <laughs> so, um, okay, so we're gonna test one. It feels just about right, but it's very possible that it could break apart. I have a few different molds. Um, this mold is from Kata Molds. And Kata, Kata, I'm not sure how to say it. And they are awesome. I watched, I watched a video on how to do this <laughs> because I was like not figuring it out, but basically, you just put some in here. And what they said was that if you want it to have a little Saturn ring, then you keep filling it a little bit over like this. But if you don't want it to have a Saturn ring, you basically stop right at the edge of the mold. I like having a little bit of a Saturn ring. And then you basically just push it down. And some people think that this you know, it might be a little excessive using three pieces, but um, it does make a really, really nice bath bomb. And sometimes it's messy, but it's not any more or less messy than other ways to do it. See what I mean about the Saturn ring? That's where this little guy is gonna be. So if you had packed it more, this would be thicker. If you packed it less, this might not even be visible, but we're gonna test it out. I like to use a heavy um, butter knife. I have these ones are pretty hefty on this side and I just like to tap it to release it. And you can tell when it's about to release because it sounds hollow. See the little speckles I was talking to you about? I don't mind it. And then you wanna tap the other side Sometimes if you have a really dry, um, really dry base, it will, you know, pop right out. But it really depends on your recipe. See, that sounds hollow now. Little speckles. Okay, it's staying. That's great. Um, so yeah, basically that's how you use those ones. Um, what I started out with was these and I haven't used these in a really long time, so we'll give it a shot. Basically what I would do is just put some in both of these and then smash them. Well, 
be a little more packed, I guess. Yeah, like I said, guys, it's been a while since I've used these. <laughs> Makes the other ones seem a lot easier to use. Right, here we go. Um, I'm not sure what the size difference is either of these. Well, let's check. These ones seem smaller, but... If your mold is not releasing, when you try to pull on it, don't force it. I'll show you what happens if you force it. Oh well, it almost did it. So um, when you force it, sometimes the bath bomb just decides to stick so much and it just doesn't, um, it just breaks in half. So yeah, actually they look basically the same size. So, um, but as far as stability and everything goes, I really do like the Kata molds more. I just think that they're, it's a better system. And I think that you can control your Saturn ring a little bit better with these. So this is always going to be my favorite. All right. And you can tell when you have a wetter mix when you have a dryer mix or a perfect mix, this should pretty much compact down easily for you. Um, if you have a wetter mix or too much oil in your mix, it tends to not have as much give when you're pressing the pieces together. Um, and that can cause your mixture to not um, stick together from both sides. It, sometimes it just falls apart, so. Yeah, so that is how I make the bath bombs. Um, and I'll show you guys at the end of the video me testing one out. It's gonna be, um, well, technically you'll see it as it being a few seconds later, but for me it's gonna be the next day just because I have to let them settle a little bit. But, um, so if you, if you correctly bloom your bath bomb mixture, basically blooming is where you just take the baking soda or, you know, sodium bicarbonate. Um, you just take that and, um, some water and some colorant. If you have a dry colorant, I like to mix my colorant and water for a little while first before I, um, put it into the, the baking soda mixture, but do whatever's comfortable with you. Some people have like spray bottles like this of the lakes and the dyes, and they just, you know, whatever's water soluble, they just keep in a spray bottle and spray it. And that is really the best way to disperse the color evenly without having little dots. Um, but I think it gives these more character. I, I was thinking about just adding more water and letting it sit another night because you can do that if it's not fully if you're getting these little speckles, but um, it doesn't do any harm. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not, um, what's the word? Some people don't like it. Some people want a completely seamless bath bomb that's all one color with no speckling or anything on it, which I get that. That's usually what I go for, so. But yeah, I hope this uh, was informative for you guys to see what to do what not to do how to change things um there's always hope when you're making bath bombs it doesn't seem like it sometimes when you're just getting started because it really is there are a lot of nuances that go into making bath bombs and um sometimes it's really frustrating and you want to give up like i gave up for a few months and i kept making soap because that's the main thing that i make but I'm glad I came back to bath bombs because now I'm making donut bath bombs and all kinds of cute things. And I'm hoping to get more molds. I found some on Etsy that are super cute. I'll link the shop. I haven't bought anything from them yet, so I can't say if they're 
good or not, but they, oh, see that popped right out. It could mean the mixture is getting too dry though. So if we put it down here and it breaks, if you set it down and it breaks, that means you need a little bit more water. Anyway, so I'll link some of the items that I used, like Kata molds, the colorants I used, the fragrance oil. Um, I'll link my Etsy shop too if you want to take a look at my goodies, um, even for ideas or whatever. Um, if you do use an idea of mine or you use this recipe, um, feel free to tag me. I'll put my Instagram handle, um, my TikTok and everything so you guys can tag me. Let me know um, what you think, if it worked, um, what you might change. But yeah, I'm going to finish these up and then we'll come back for a test video. So thank you guys so much. See you soon. Okay, so we're gonna plop it in here and see how it works. It looks like it tried to go to the bottom for a second and then it floated up. And we definitely are getting uh, lots of spinning, which is awesome, that's exactly what we wanted. And I love that this is a foaming bath bomb, not just a fizzy bath bomb, uh, because the foam I think is very luxurious. You get the oils on top of the water and it feels really moisturizing to the skin. Well, I hope you guys love this video, and if you found it helpful, please go ahead and like and subscribe. Um, you can hit the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. I'll definitely have more recipes coming up here. So thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Bye!